Okay, today in this video we are going to be looking at installing universal adapters on irons. I've got a bunch of irons, I've got a bunch of shafts that are going into the Elite Fit Golf Studio and we're going to be putting all fit universal adapters on all of it. I'm going to show you how to do it and then we're going to look at how it works. So let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm AJ. We are in the Elite Fit Golf build shop. We are also going to be in the studio a little bit later. All right, so in this video, again, we are going to be installing all fit iron universal adapters that will allow me to basically take any of these iron heads and match them up with any of these shafts. So these all fit adapters have two basic parts. You've got one part that's going to go into the hosel, and then you've got one part or couple parts that are going to go onto the shaft. These two things together will lock together so that you can actually have a functioning fully formed golf club. So the biggest, most difficult part of this process, I would say, is going to be getting the heads ready for these adapter pieces because what we have here is a piece of metal that does not currently fit inside of any standard hosel. So we are going to need to actually bore out that hosel, make it a little bit wider so that we can slide these in. So let me show you exactly what we're going to need for that. Okay, so here's what we're going to need. First off, obviously, we've got our iron head. This is a sub 77 iron. And again, this is the adapter piece that's going to fit in the hosel, but right now it will not fit. So we're going to have to bore this hosel out in order to fit this adapter inside it. The tool that you're going to need for that, and you can get the drill bit directly from All Fit. I have one of those, but I've worn it down, so I'm also uh, going to end up using this backup, which is a 7 16th or 11.1 millimeter. I think the one that they actually sent me said it was 11.2 millimeter. I don't know uh, why there's that small of a difference. I have a feeling they're probably the same, and it's just a matter of how they measure it because I've used this now. Uh, and it seems to work just the same. So 7 16 or 11.1 millimeter is what you're going to need in order to drill this to this size. You are going to need also a drill press. There is no real way to get around having a drill press here. You are not going to be able to accomplish this with a hand drill. So you will need to have a drill press in order to bore out those hosels. I've also got, this is from Golfworks, but this little vice clamp that holds the heads inside here with the hosel pointing straight up makes it easier to drill. So I've got that all locked in and lined up. So first off, we're going to drill out this hosel. Now I've also seen this question asked a few times when the people are talking about different universal adapters, and that is, doesn't it change the weight? Doesn't it make the club a lot heavier? Things like that when we're talking about putting these adapter systems in. So we're going to just see what happens. We're going to weigh this head as it sits in its raw form and then when we're all done we'll weigh it with all the adapter paraphernalia in it and see how it compares so for starting raw weight before we start drilling we've got a head weight of 271 grams now according to the instructions that they provided you're going to want to bore out the hosel basically we want the same length as what this piece will be sitting down inside there which is actually 27 you can see it here, 27 millimeters. So that's how far down we are gonna to wanna to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some masking tape around the drill bit so I know when I hit 27 millimeters. Okay, drills in the chuck, heads in the vise. I've got some three-in-one oil that I'm gonna be applying to the drill bit just to try and keep everything cool. The key here, I think, if you haven't done much with a drill press, which I hadn't, uh, is just working slowly, make sure the drill is not moving very fast and just really taking your time so the drill bit doesn't overheat and just sort of working it in stages. We're gonna have ample safety protection here. So I've got, of course, safety glasses. You definitely want these. I've got heavy shop gloves here. I've also got earplugs in this case. So basically just making sure we have everything covered in case of any issues.
I find it's a good idea halfway through, and it'll depend on, again, on what kind of head you're using. But halfway through, I go and take it out and dump out any sort of debris that ends up in the head, because in some cases it starts to fill up with a lot of metal shavings and it makes the drilling harder. So about halfway through, I'll take it out, dump that out, make sure there's nothing in there to impede it, put it back in, a little more oil, and we'll continue. Gonna see if this little adapter fits all the way in all the way up to the little lip right there and as you can see perfect let's go ahead and see what that weight change ended up being so remember in the beginning we were at 271 raw weight before we started boring out the hosel obviously this is going to be lighter now 265 plus the hosel adapter 267 plus the shaft adapter pieces that will then go on to the shaft, but will add weight to the head overall. And we'll put all this on together. And 272. So after all this, with the adapter and everything, we've changed the overall weight of the head one gram. That's probably about as good as you can ever hope for. Okay, head's ready to go. Next, shaft. Shaft adapter portion comes in three different sections, three different pieces. You've got a little O-ring here, which I think is just meant to keep this second piece, this little cog piece, from sliding too far up. So you've got the, the O-ring, you've got the cog, and then you've got this piece that goes on the end that's actually gonna be glued on, and that's gonna be what actually locks everything together. Now. Quick note here, what they sent me was all 370 tip uh, adapter pieces here. They said that these actually work better regardless because sometimes because of tolerances, the fit on smaller ones may not actually fit inside here. So we're gonna go with these. And because of that, because you're gonna end up with a fit that's a little bit looser than I like, uh, we're gonna use my old friend drywall mesh tape. You've seen me use this before when we have a loose fitting uh, shaft inside a hosel, but we're basically going to cut thin strips of this, put it over the shaft, and then install the adapter to make sure we get a nice snug fit, nice and centered, and uh, don't have any shaft lean one way or the other. So next step we're going to do is we're going to prep all the tips of the shafts just like we would with any other golf club. So we're going to sand, uh, sand up the tips a little, both steel and graphite, get the paint off the graphite shaft. And then I'm also going to go ahead, just like I did with the heads, and make sure that we don't have any oil inside these adapter pieces. We're going to run some acetone inside of all these.
Okay, next, let me show you the steps of actually making sure we prep the hosel correctly and make sure that when we come, when it comes time to glue the adapter onto the shaft, it's in the right position. So what they recommend doing is actually figuring out where the adapter is gonna sit. So what we're gonna do is basically take one of the iron heads with the little adapter piece on it and the shaft with its adapter piece, put them together and figure out exactly where it sits so that we can then mark this with uh, some masking tape or something like that so that when we actually epoxy it together, we know how far the adapter needs to sit up the shaft. All right, let me show you what we're going to be doing with these. This is one of the taper tip shafts, so we are going to use a little bit of our mesh tape here. So we're just going to cut a little, little piece of the mesh tape like that, and that's just going to go right over the top like that, give us a little tighter fit. And we're just going to put a tiny bit of epoxy inside the adapter like that and then we'll put a little bit on the shaft again make sure at this point that you've got your cog and your little uh, o-ring there make sure they're on because if they aren't on at this point you're not going to be able to get them on so and we're going to put this right over the top like this Kind of pinch that on and then slide this over like that. Kind of rotate that on. And it may end up cutting some of that mesh tape just because it's a very sharp edge. Don't worry if it does, just let it go and you can clean it up in the end with a utility knife. And then we just want to make sure that these little notches, one of these notches, like this patent pending one, will go ahead and line up with whatever sort of logo you may have if there's a logo on the shaft already printed. When I fit some of these together, I realized that the adapter was maybe a touch higher than it needed to be. So I'm going back in those cases and just uh, grinding down or sanding down or cutting off the very last little tip section of the shaft that was maybe sticking up a little bit past here so that when I fit them together, I get a nice, good, tight connection between the two so I can measure it and cut it.
Okay, last thing to do, we're gonna try it out, make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to. So I've got one of my iron heads here and I've got one of my shafts here. We're gonna put these together. You're gonna line up the little uh, notches in the two adapter pieces. In this case, we wanna make sure that uh, I've got the shaft logo down because that's how I epoxied everything together. We'll bring it up like this, then we're just gonna tighten our little cog here. You give us a little wrench, give it one more little turn just to make sure it's snug. Roll down this O-ring just to make it look a little neater. And now, let's see if it works. Okay, nothing was rattling or anything like that. Everything felt solid. Now let's say we want to change out this shaft and try something different. Take our wrench back, move our little O-ring up a little, twist it opposite direction just to get it started. Take that shaft out. Let's try a graphite shaft this time. Get our logos lined up the way we had it. A little adapter in, bring it up. Tighten it down a little bit. One more twist, just to make it snug. We'll bring that O-ring down, we'll give it a try. So everything seems to be working well. I fit quite a few shots with it, haven't had any rattles, haven't had any jiggling issues, so everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, and it allows you to switch out shafts or switch out heads in just a matter of seconds. So yes, there's definitely some prep time involved. The construction side of it, the build side of it takes a little while because you're doing a lot of epoxy and you're doing a lot of prepping. You have to drill out these hosels with a drill press. But you eventually will sort of get into a rhythm, gets a little bit faster, and then at the end of it, you've got basically a setup where you can demo or try out whatever different shaft you wanna try with whatever different head. So a lot of options, and I think it's a good little product from what I've seen. It's gonna be what I'm using here in the Elite Fit Golf Studio for my fittings going forward. Hey, if you're interested in these all fit adapters, I've left a promo code down in the description below. So if you're gonna order some, definitely use that promo code, save a little bit of money. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon as always so you can be alerted when I post new videos. Definitely check out my new channel at Elite Fit Golf and check me out on Instagram at Mobile Clubmaker. We'll see you next time. Take care.